Being able to properly remove and refit the wheels on your bike is an essential skill. It's something that you'll need to be able to do if you're gonna repair a puncture, or perhaps you'll want to take your wheels off so that you can put your bike inside the boot of a car. Now in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it for rim brakes, disc brakes, and also quick release levers through axles and bolts. It's really quick and easy, but if you've not done it before, we're gonna show you how so that you know how to do it safely and properly without damaging your bike. For this job, you don't require many tools and in many cases, you don't require any tools at all. But if your bike does require tools, it's likely to be an Allen key, usually a five or six millimeter Allen key. And then on some older bike designs and track bike designs, you'll need spanners. The first thing you need to do is to determine the type of brakes on your bike. The two most common types are rim brakes, such as on my bike, and disc brakes. Now, regardless of the type of axle that's on your bike, if you have rim brakes, what you'll need to do is undo the little release lever, which opens the brake caliper. This allows the wheel to drop out once you undo the axle. Now, some older designs might not have this lever that allows you to get the tire past the brake blocks. If that's the case, you might need to deflate your tire in order to get it out. Now, the most common axle type on a rim brake bike is a quick release lever like this. Now, disc brake bikes more commonly have through axles. I'm gonna show you through axles in a minute as they're slightly different, but first, a quick release lever. I just wanted to show you a quick release lever. So it's made up of these different parts. Don't worry if you completely undo it, it can go back together again. You have a spring at each end to create tension in the cam as you close the lever and then this bolt on the other side. One detail to remember is that the lever part of a quick release lever is designed to go on the non-drive side of your bike on both the front and rear wheel. Quick release lever is held in place by a lever like this, you'll see on the non-drive side of the bike. To remove it, you simply pull it open like that, and then you'll usually have to get your other hand and hold the bolt, simply turn it counterclockwise to undo it. Once it's loose with your caliper open, the wheel should just remove and lift out of the bike. To put it back in, you simply put the bike correctly back in the dropouts, and you can just do up the lever till it's finger tight and then close the lever back on itself. There should be some resistance, it should feel fairly tight and you can feel the bike isn't going anywhere. It's important to make sure that the, the wheel is correctly inserted into the dropouts of the fork. If the wheel isn't properly inserted it might not be in straight and it can also be a little bit dangerous to ride. So the best way to put the wheel back in the bike is with the weight of the bike on the ground. It's not a good idea to put a wheel back into a bike holding it freestanding as it might not properly go into the dropouts. Now, regardless of the type of brakes or axles your bike has, the rear wheel takes a little bit more consideration to remove than the front one. The front one's a bit easier, but don't worry, it's still easy to remove the rear wheel. The first thing you need to make sure is that it's in the correct gear to remove it. So it's quite hard to remove the, front, the rear wheel if it's in the big cog on the cassette. So shift it down into the little one. With the chain on the little sprocket on the cassette, it's then the same steps as before. Open the quick release lever, hold it by both ends, undo it, you don't need to undo it the whole way. And then once it's loose and your brake caliper is open, you can simply pull the, the wheel out the frame. You'll often have to pull the rear derailleur backwards with your hand to allow the wheel to come out. It's for this reason that you need to put the chain on the smallest sprocket. Pulling the rear derailleur backwards over the largest sprocket on the cassette can often be difficult. With your rear wheel removed, something that you have to be aware of is the vulnerability of the rear mech. Now this is quite a delicate part of the bike, so you shouldn't be resting the bike or putting any weight on it, um, putting it on the ground, and be careful not to knock it, say if you're putting it in the back of a car. There shouldn't be weight on this area, as this can cause the hanger to bend slightly, and that will mean that your gears go out of alignment. So 
what I would suggest you do is either hold the bike as you're doing whatever it's you're doing or get a friend to hold it. Or if you really do need to pop it on the ground, the uh, way to do it is to always gently rest it with the drive side up. Never rest it on the drive side. Now to reinstall the rear wheel, the technique is the same for different types of brakes, more or less. It's simply a reversal of what we did to remove it. So pull the rear derailleur backwards and then introduce your wheel. Make sure that the chain goes around the back there and the top of the chain sits on the top of the cassette and simply pull it into the dropouts. It's important as well to do this with the bike resting on the ground as this ensures that there's weight going through it and the wheel will be properly seated in the dropouts, much like the front wheel. With the wheel properly in the dropouts, we can then do up the quick release lever. And then do up the brake. And we're good to go. The quick release lever should be tightened so that it's not so loose that it will come open by itself, but also that it's not too tight that you can actually close it shut and will be able to open it again if you need to remove your wheel at a future date. Also to check that your wheels are properly inserted into the dropouts of the bike, simply pick it up once you've reinstalled them and give them a spin. You should see them tracking against the brake pads by looking down and you'll see if the wheel's in straight. If you followed the steps and put the wheel in on the ground with some weight behind it, it should be in straight. On to through axles then, which are the next most common form of axles on a bike. This is a bike that has through axles and to undo them, you will either find that your through axle has a lever built into it, which you just turn anti-clockwise to undo it and clockwise to tighten it, much like many things. But this one doesn't have an inbuilt lever into it, and this is quite common as well. And for that, you'll require an Allen key. This is usually a five or a six mil Allen key, but it's often written on it. This one's a six. So I simply put the Allen key in and turn it counterclockwise to undo. With it undone, you can then simply pull it out and that's your through axle. With the through axle removed, you can simply lift the wheel out of the bike like this. Now, an important thing with a disc brake bike and hydraulic calipers is that you should never depress the brake lever with the wheel removed and the rotor removed from the caliper as this will cause it to shut, meaning that you'll have to open it uh, manually and prise it open, which isn't ideal. So a good thing to do is to put these little stoppers in the caliper with the wheel removed. This is especially important if you're gonna be transporting your bike anywhere. And bear in mind that even if you don't press the lever deliberately by hand, when you're moving it into say the back of a car, it's easy for the lever to get knocked and then close the caliper. If you don't have one of these, then don't worry. You can use a folded up business card as a hack and it works just as well. Now to reinstall your wheel with a disc brake rotor on it, lift your forks over the bike and then you just wanna make sure that you get the alignment of the rotor into the caliper as best you can. And then it simply slots into place and then you simply take your through axle, pop it back in and do it up. Now bear in mind that some through axles are different on different bikes. This one comes in from the drive side of the fork, but on other designs, they sometimes come in from the non-drive side. It depends from bike to bike. With the through axle popped into place, simply take your Allen key, or if it has a built-in lever, use that, and then apply some pressure to it and simply tighten it up. Sometimes they have a recommended torque setting on them. This one says 20 newton meters, but if you tighten it up by hand, so that it's as tight as it'll go, that should be fine. With the wheel reinserted and the through axle done up, pick up the bike and give the wheel a spin. And you just wanna check that it's in properly and that the rotor isn't rubbing on the caliper. If it is, it might be that the through axle is done up too loose or too tight, or that the wheel isn't properly seated in the dropout and is therefore in at a slightly wonky angle. You need to undo it, 
put it back in with the weight on the bike, do it up again, should be okay. For the rear wheel on a through axle equipped bike with disc brakes, it's the same as what we did with the quick release lever. So drop it into the smallest sprocket for ease of wheel removal, then simply undo the through axle, pull the rear derailleur out to allow the wheel to drop out and just follow those same steps and you should be good. There is a third type of axle that is much less common than quick releases and through axles, and that's a bolted axle. It's still found on track bikes and fixies, and is more common on older bikes. And what this involves is having a bolt on either side of the axle. The wheel removal and insertion procedures are exactly the same in terms of pulling the derailleur out, putting it into the lowest gear and things like that. But you'll need a couple of spanners to remove it. So I don't have one here, unfortunately, because it is only found on older bikes, but I can sort of give you the idea. So you take two spanners, you'd have one on one side, one on the other, and you'd have to use one spanner to hold the bolt while you undo anti-clockwise the other one. And in doing so, you will undo the wheel and be able to remove it. Now, in all cases, before you set off, give your wheels a spin, check they're running freely, check your brakes are properly working back on the wheel again. And depending on the type of axle system that you have, make sure you've got the tools with you on a ride so that you can remove and insert your wheels, whatever that is for your particular bike. If you're new to cycling and didn't know how to remove your wheel, then I hope this video has answered your questions and you've found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up as it helps support the channel. And for more essential bike maintenance videos, hit subscribe to GCN Tech. I'll see you in the next one.